I thought I would take you all kind of where it all began. We used to finish pigs in our old barn across the road and we renovated it in 2011. That was the year I was done at the chicken farm and I spent that winter kind of tearing apart the old pig finishing barn and we kind of retrofitted it for sheep and lamb. I'm going to take you on a little bit of a tour and I found some old pictures and I'll just run you through kind of what we did and what it looks like now, what it looked like then. The pig farm, I think, came to be in the late 70s. They renovated the old bank barn to be uh, part of the pig operation. So they took the downstairs portion of the barn and made pens in it. So this is the beef barn we renovated last winter. And we put in these nice uh, self-locking head gates. We have one divider kind of in between this whole section. And then that back door back there is always open. We have a cement pad we poured back there and some corral gates uh, just to either keep them in there or, keep, or kick them out. This was our part of our pig facility. We kept, I can't remember how many pigs it was in here. There was a second floor, but that all got, it all got torn out of here and Mark used it as uh, storage for some fertilizer tanks and stuff before. It's been kind of used for everything. It's been handy because it's such a big, it's such a big building. Now I'll show you the uh, lamb barn. Originally, the, the barn was set up, pens all the way along. They had cement dividers. We had to jackhammer all that stuff out. Took a long time and uh, took out the old floor. There were slats on, uh, on both sides. We took those out, filled it in with fill, and then poured a new floor. I think they came back and poured the center alley a few days later. If if my, if my long-term memory serves me correctly. I believe that's what we did. I remember it was cold. I do remember that much. The gates I don't like. Um, I would never do those gates again. The welds have all rusted off the bottom. They're big and cumbersome. They're almost too tall, but I was so scared that the, the ewes and the sheep were gonna jump over them. I don't know why I thought that, but they're a pain. I don't like those gates. The water bowls, we went with the trigger, the little green sheep water bowls with the triggers. They work out, they work really good. The only thing I would change there is I would have, I wish we buried our water lines so they didn't freeze in the winter. Uh, I still think we'd probably suffer a little bit on getting it from the ground to the bowl. I still think that that would probably freeze if it's cold enough over there. The outside of the pig barn, they had the, they had fans, they had exhaust fans and, and louvers, uh, and it was all based on stack pressure. That's how the pig barn worked. So we took all those out and we busted out the top, I think four, uh, three or four feet, maybe three feet, and put a curtain, uh, a curtain that can drop all the way down. So in the summer, that's pretty much all down. And then the rest of the wall is concrete. And we also have chimneys and they're all run by cranks, all manual cranks. I've had my vet in. We, he wanted me to do this like two years ago and I still haven't done it. Right now we use circulating fans in the summer for ventilation and, and I need them. I have lost lambs due to prolapses because they get coughing. Uh, the circ fans have, have basically eliminated that. But there's a better way to do it and I am, um, I just need to research the numbers a little bit more and hopefully this summer I'll put them in. I think it's called a forced air tube or something. An air tube bag that would go along kind of the peak of the barn and then the, the holes, they have the measurements of where that would actually hit the lambs. So then the lambs always get fresh air coming from those tubes. I've talked about this before. The one thing when you, when you plan an operation or plan expansion, you never have enough storage. So we've also put on a lean to for all our straw bales or hay bales or whatever we need for storage. So there's never ever enough storage. As for the rest of the barn, it worked okay for the ewes and the lambs. I found it really awkward with we the weaning process and stuff and you just, you just didn't have enough room to keep lambs and all the sheep that you wanted and we didn't plan that out very well. It was probably just as well we, we built the new barn and then this is just dedicated for finishing lambs and it works really slick. The automated feeder, we put that system in la this past year 
and it works really well. Our corn this year, the stuff we're using right now has a lot of fines in it because we, uh, our corn was really wet this year and what happened is in our bins, it, it, it the, the fines kind of go to the middle. So we cored out all our bins so we would be able to ship it without any, any problems with fines. And uh, so we're actually feeding those. They're not, they're, it's, so it's not screenings, but it's not 100% just good, nice corn either. So there's, I am struggling a bit this winter with, um, it, it plugs up my feeders a little bit. Every single day we have to make sure we go in there and make sure we scrape it out so it doesn't, uh, so it doesn't plug. Uh, other than that, uh, it works really slick. We have two bins for that system and it goes into a proportioner and the proportioner right now is 80% corn and 20% of the supplement. The supplement's a 39% protein. Our feed costs have definitely improved. So it was worth doing, especially if you grow a lot of that. That's your big cost in sheep farming is your feed. Uh, the roof, we actually left the steel on from the old roof and then we framed on top of it uh, laid insulation, uh, the foam insulation, we just laid those out and then laid a new roof on top of it. So we did that all ourselves. We did most of the work ourselves, which helped with the costs. Everything is very doable if you're at all handy and you have enough people to help you. Um, and it was a way for me to get into sheep without really spending a huge amount of uh, money on infrastructure when I wasn't entirely sure that that's what we wanted to do. If you do have buildings at your disposal, I would say you want something with a high enough roof because you want to be able to clean out your barn mechanically. Take the time, if you can, to renovate it so you can use a loader or a small telehandler or a small uh, skid steer. Uh, it will make your life 100% better and you will do the job. So. That would be my only recommendation is to make sure your ceilings are high enough. My biggest thing over there I would say is ventilation. I just need to work on that a little bit more. Hopefully that helps if anyone's thinking of retrofitting a barn or renovating, it's totally possible. Uh, be resourceful, be creative. Most sheep farmers are. We make do with a lot of stuff. This was a way for me to get into the sheep business and a good way for me to know if I liked it or not. The barns weren't costing us any money. Um, of course they did after we renovated. Good luck if you are renovating or retrofitting. You can do it. It was a long, that was a long process, but there is no greater feeling when it's all said and done and it looks so nice. Very proud of that barn. I still really like going over there and seeing my lambs thrive. Have a good one everyone.